Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about improving dashboard performance and resource usage in this Tech Talk. My name is Lizzie and I'm joined here by Mateo and we are both product managers on dashboards. Today we're going to cover a couple of different things. We're going to talk about what are the various factors that contribute to dashboard performance and resource usage, how to optimize your dashboard, and then Mateo will uh, give us a live demo of how to use some of those tips and tricks on how to optimize your dashboard. And then we'll close off with some additional resources that you can use as you continue your journey with Dashboard Studio. So let's talk about a couple of factors that contribute to dashboard performance and resource usage. So when we talk about performance, typically we're talking about two different things. One is the page load time and the responsiveness of just the UI in general. And the other thing is the data rendering times, how long it takes for the search to execute and actually return data into the charts. So page load times and responsiveness are impacted by the number of elements that you have on a dashboard, as well as the image size, if you have any images that you included on your dashboard. Data rendering times are impacted by the search execution performance, so just purely how long it takes the search to execute and return data, and then also the number of searches that you have in a dashboard. If your dashboard has more searches than your user role has for the concurrency limit, uh, you may find that it may take a little bit longer for all of those searches to, to make their way through the queue to execute and actually return data to complete your dashboard. When we talk about resource usage, we're actually talking about the compute required to run all of these searches. And so resource usage is predominantly impacted by uh, search execution performance and again, the number of searches in a dashboard. So let's talk about how to start optimizing those various ass factors that we just talked about. So the first one is around visual elements in your dashboard. So when we say visual elements, we're talking about the various charts, images, text boxes, shapes, so on and so forth that you may be including in your dashboard. The first thing I want to call out is images. If you have any images that are in your dashboard, the first thing to do is look at reducing the file size by compressing the image as much as possible. Also, if you are um, including images in your dashboard, we definitely recommend trying to avoid Base64 encoding those images if possible. When you add images to dashboards, there's kind of three ways that you can do so. One is to upload the image directly to your dashboard. One is to, or the second is to reference an image from a URL, whether that's external or a relative URL to somewhere in your Splunk deployment. And then the third is Base64 encoding. And Base64 encoding, you know, as we mentioned, uh, will contribute the most to increasing the overall size of the dashboard, which can then impact the uh, load times and the responsiveness. The other thing you can do if you have a lot of visual elements on your dashboard is to see if there are any ways for you to combine some of those elements together into one. So in the example that you can see below, I have a legend that I've created using a combination of shapes and text boxes. On the left hand side, as you can see, is outlined in blue. This means there are six elements on my dashboard that I need in order to create this element. But what you could do is create this image in whatever visual tool you prefer outside of Splunk and then upload it as one image on your dashboard. So it still serves the same purpose. There's still a legend available on my dashboard, but as you can see on the right-hand side, it's now just one element. Uh, but again, this will likely only help if you really have a lot of visual elements on the dashboard. If you only have a handful or you have you know, roughly um, like 80 or less, likely this will not make a significant impact. Now let's talk about how to optimize search performance. So we're gonna talk first about how to leverage base and chain searches to optimize your search performance. In the example below, imagine that we have these three searches that we want to run in our dashboard. That means these three searches are executed all on your search head. But if we take a close look at the searches here, you can see that the first two pipes in each of these searches are the same. What that means is we could actually combine these searches to have one base search, which is comprised of those first two sections, and then take the results of that base search and do some further post-processing using chain searches. 
So as you can see here, we've outlined um, the different pieces of these searches to give you an idea of how these might be converted from three um, ad hoc searches to a base search and a number of chain searches. Um, the base search, as you can see, is, as we mentioned, the first two pipes. And then we can do some additional post-processing, as you see in chain search one and two, um, to extend those to look at um, to look at additional information about, for example, um, actions that were successful versus actions that were unsuccessful. And then if we want to do any further post-processing from there, we can, can we can chain a, yet again, as you can see um, in chain search 2A and chain search 2B. So you are able to put together um, a string of base and chain searches. And as you can see, we have kind of a tree um, of chain searches that are extended off of this base search. Another really cool thing in Dashboard Studio that you can do is actually reuse one search for multiple visualizations. So a little bit different than base and chain searches, um, you can actually use the same exact search across multiple visualizations. And the key here is to make sure that that search is returning all of the data that you want. So imagine that you are a candy manufacturer and you want to view daily candy production in a dashboard and your data looks something like the table here on the left. What you want is a dashboard that shows, you know, today's production, which shows the latest data point that we have, as well as the trend over time. By reusing the same search uh, that returns the table of data that we see on the left, we can actually use this just one search for all of the charts that are on the right-hand side. So if we were to try to do this in classic simple XML dashboards, you would have needed multiple searches or a base search with multiple chains in order to achieve this kind of dashboard. But with Dashboard Studio, you can use just one search to power all six charts that you saw in the example. So Rather than looking at more slides trying to illustrate this, I'm going to hand this off to Mateo now, who's going to walk you through a live demo of how to configure these base and chain searches and how to reuse searches for multiple visualizations. Okay, great. Thank you, Lizzie, for walking through all of that for us. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share us a dashboard. We're going to go through two examples today. One is going to be around base and chain searches in action, and another is going to be about reusing searches across visualizations. So we're starting here on our dashboard. Um, just a quick recap, everything inside of the dash line of the dashboard is going to be what's on our canvas. We're going to have all our configurations here on the right-hand side. So for our first example around base and chain, what we're doing is we're looking at a search that returns HTTP codes by status. Um, what we have is a nice rich set of results here that we're going to use to create some chain searches off of it. And as a reminder, anytime that you do want to use a base search, it's really important to make sure that you already have all of the data that you need in your chain searches in that base search. Um, you can't go back and get it again. You just need to make sure you have it all up front and that's all gonna be done first. So the SPL that I have here is just a really simple um, searching an internal index, getting a stats count by source type and status. Over in our table, you can see that we just have a simple combination of for each source type, what's the status code and as well, the count for how many instances there are for that combination. Um, so let's say what I really want to do show on my dashboard is not just these counts, but I actually want to have a chart specifically around failures and which source types have failures. Uh, so what I can do is I can create a chain search over here. Um, if I were to create one, I've already created them already, so it's going to be a little bit faster for us. But if I were to create one, it's just as simple as saying create a new chain search. Uh, select the parent search to be HTTP codes by source type. And you can see I have that same SPL here already. Um, and then if I were to write in my SPL here for my chain search, um, which we've already done, I'll go back and take a look at that. You can see that we're now doing that additional post-processing of searching for only status codes that start with the four so that we know that we're failures. We're only interested in the field source type and the count for the number of failures there are for that source type. And then what we're doing is we're going to sort that from greatest number of failures to least number of failures. So if I select that, I can now see that I have my chart populated with data. And that's it. It's really that easy to create a chain search on your dashboard.
Um, but now let's say in particular, I really want to make it really clear which source type is responsible for that greatest number of failures. Um, so looking at the chart, we only have a handful here, but one really stands out. Rather than going back and creating another chain search off of the base search, which is duplicative of that chain search I already have, what I could do is set up another chain search here, create the chain search, and I can select that previous chain search source type failures as the parent. And now I can see here both the base search and the chain search are all together already present up here. And I can do any additional post-processing that I want to do at this step. So I'm going to go, I'm going to select the one that we've already set up. And now I can see that I have data in my chart. So just to verify, I'm going to go into the view mode for the dashboard and see that this is in fact the same source type, Spunk D access, which was responsible for the most number of errors in my instance. So as you can see, in Dashboard Studio, we really prioritize empowering our users with creating more performant dashboards, including making the chain searches as easy to use as possible. Um, we have three visualizations. All of them are really only using that base search to run once to the back end, and then we're only doing post-processing off of that initial result. Um, so whenever you are creating your dashboard and you have that situation where you have multiple visualizations that you know are using that same data set underneath, uh, and you know that the queries are similar, you can try to be deliberate about using, using a base search to do all of that processing up front as much as possible. And if at any point when you're building your dashboard, you want a refresher as to how the base and chain search, you can actually take a look at our in-product examples hub. So if I go over to the dashboard listing page, I can easily open up the examples hub here under examples for dashboard studio into a new tab. And in our examples hub, we have a ton of examples around the different visualization types that we have, different configurations for them and design elements. Um, but today, what we're really interested in is for data sources. And we're going to look at our example for base and chain searches. Uh, so inside of this example, uh, there's a quick recap about what base and chain searches are, how they work, as well as some actual visualization set up on a dashboard using base and chain searches with all of the source definitions for those searches available underneath. Um, so the Examples Hub is a great user resource to use, um, not just for base and chain searches. We also have complete dashboard examples for you to even take a look at for inspiration or to take the definitions and use as a template to build your own dashboard. I'm going to bring us back now to our example dashboard that we're working on. And what we saw in our first example was around base and chain search, um, where we had three different visualization types. We had a table, a chart, and a single value. Um, we had to do a little bit of post-processing and formatting to make sure the data worked for those different chart types. Sometimes, though, we might have a situation where we just want to display a lot of KPIs. This is a super common use case with our customers where they just want to have that group of KPIs in their dashboard. Um, they might create, be creating a search, uh, looking up different counts based off of an index for auditing, um, and they might want to have all, all, all of that work done at once and then trying to display all that data. So in this case, you're thinking of a situation where you have that initial part of the search is really going to be the same, and that should make you go, ah, I have an opportunity here for me to reuse my search. Um, that'll help improve the performance of my dashboard. Now, there's a little bit of nuance about whether you use a base and chain search or you can actually just reuse the search. Uh, so I'm going to show you a scenario where you can just get away with just using that same search multiple times. So for our example down here, what we have is I'll take a look at this SPL so you can see. We're just going to search the index for audit. We're going to get the count for the number of actions that have taken over the past 24 hours. Uh, we're going to sort them to see which actions have occurred the most. We're going to take the top three. We're going to transpose it so that way each action is its own column, and we're going to have a count uh, for each column. So in our case, we have the, the top actions in the past 24 hours have been search, get password, and create password. So let's say we want to run, run a search um, to get the number of searches that have been run. What I could do is I could you know, set up and create a chain search just like before, set my parent search to be the top three actions, and then filter to be just the uh, number of searches to be the result that I want to show. However, something that Dashboard Studio allows you to do is show the specific fields that you're interested for in a visualization. So what I could do is actually just select that same search again on this single value that's already run on the table. Um, and then I don't have to rerun the search again. I don't even need to do any additional post-processing. I already have the result available to my dashboard and I can render it. Um, 
And that's true for any number of visualizations. So from one search, I could have who knows how many visualizations on my dashboard, each selecting a specific field or a specific fields. Um, and this is true for all of our latest Splunk dot type visualizations in Dashboard Studio. So another example might be if I had a column chart and I only wanted to show certain columns in one column chart and different columns in a different chart, I could have one search that powers both of them and only one search is ever going to execute and I get two visualizations out of it. Um, we don't have UI yet for those other visualizations, so we're going to stick with the single values for today, though. So in my single value, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just set up and select that existing search that I had for my table, top three actions. And you can see that it's already actually rendered uh, some data. If I go to select a data field, I can see that by default, it actually already selected search. Um, so that's the same search running for two visualizations. And I can see that it's actually the same number in both. That's how I know that all the data is good. And what I can do now is I can go to the next single value and I, I can use that same search again for a third time. Double checking, I confirm that get password is being set here for what data field I'm pulling from. And I can actually go ahead and do that a third time now, again, for top three actions. And you can see that this is the same number for all of them. Uh, so now if we take a step back and look at our dashboard, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different visualizations that are really only running two searches against our backend. Um, we have a little bit of post-processing, but we're really getting a lot of mileage out of that top three action search as well. Um, so this means we are consuming way less resources than we would have if we had a separate repetitive search for every single visualization on our dashboard. Um, Lizzie mentioned the concurrent search limit earlier. Um, if we, th if we think about the concurrent search limit, if you're building or you're looking at a dashboard with a lot of searches, it's really not hard to imagine how quickly you or someone else might hit that limit on a dashboard. And a really great way around that limit is to use base and chain searches or simply even reusing that same search if possible to reduce how many searches you're running for your dashboard and, and at a time that any other person is looking at it. And reducing the number of searches and the amount of data, especially if it's unnecessarily duplicate data going to different visualizations, um, that's gonna make your dashboard load a lot faster, especially if you have a large number of visualizations. So in our case, as soon as those two searches are returned, we're gonna have data across all of our seven charts and you're gonna be able to have data on your dashboard much, much faster than you could have otherwise. That's all for our demo. I'm gonna hand it back to you, Lizzie. Awesome. Thanks, Mateo. That was an awesome demo. So now we're just going to start closing off with a couple of additional resources that you can check out to continue your dashboard studio journey. I won't go through listing all of the things that are here, but I do want to call out the examples hub again. Um, as Mateo mentioned, and as Mateo showed you in the demo, the example hub actually comes out of the box with Splunk, so you'll find it directly in your Splunk deployment. If you have any questions, you can post them to community.splunk.com to find answers or to engage with the rest of the community and get great ideas from other dashboard builders like yourself. Um, and last but not least, just want to mention a couple of other upcoming tech talks within this builder series that we recommend you check out. Um, and finally, we're ready to take some questions. So uh, feel free to drop a question in the chat. Um, and we look forward to the next time that we meet.